In this video note, I'm going to talk about binary shifting instructions. Let's start with the shift left instruction. When you shift binary bits to the left, you can shift, of course, one bit at a time, or you can shift multiple bits. So I thought I'd start with just shifting one bit. And you can see that in the two instructions at the top here, what we're doing is setting up the AL register with a pattern of eight binary bits. And then we're going to shift all of those bits one position to the left. And in the diagram, it's pretty easy to see how each binary bit moves one position to the left, and the lowest position is filled with a binary zero. So whenever you, so whenever you have a new bit to be filled, it's going to be filled with a zero. Meanwhile, the bit that was over here on the high end of the uh, original number, that uh, disappears. It actually goes into the carry flag, and uh, if we wanted to check that, we could. We could find out if a bit was in that position originally and by checking the value of the carry flag. So then let's uh, shift by two binary bits. So here's the original number again. And you notice that each bit now is going to move two positions to the left. And that means these two lowest bits are filled with zeros. Meanwhile, the two highest bits of the original number have disappeared. The last bit to be shifted, that's this one right here, will go into the carry flag, but the bit that was shifted before that, this one right here, will be completely lost. So then let's shift four bits. Now this actually has a practical purpose because sometimes what we want to do is to take the lower half of an 8-bit number and move it into the upper half. If you notice here in this original number, 0f hexadecimal, uh, which corresponds to the binary values that you see in the top there, uh, you can see that if we want to take that f and put it into the upper part of the number and the result, then we do have to shift it four binary bits to the left. And that's what we've done here. So we're saying that we really don't care about these bits. Uh, they're going to disappear these four bits are going to be moved into the higher half of the number and then these new bits over here are new because they're going to be just zeros entered into those four positions when the shift takes place. Well another interesting thing about shifting is that you can use it to zero out all the bits in a number. Suppose we start with all binary ones and then we shift it eight times we're going to end up with all binary zeros because every single bit position was um, renewed with a zero coming in from the right-hand side, and there, none of the original bits in the number uh, remain. Except, of course, the very last bit to be shifted, that one actually went into the carry flag. Let's turn our attention now to sh the shift right instruction, which moves binary bits in a number to the right direction. Now, here you can see that I've lined up this uh, AL register with four binary bits in the lower part of the number and I'm going to shift it to the right. So if we take those four bits now, each one's going to move over one bit position and as you can see the last bit on the right hand side is going to be shifted into the carry flag and will disappear from the original number. Meanwhile the highest bit here is filled with a zero. So that always happens with the shift right instruction. Let's try another example. We're going to shift right by two bits. So now we can see that this bit right here goes in this position, this one goes here. This bit just disappears completely, and this bit ends up going into the carry flag because it's the last bit to be shifted off the end of the number. Meanwhile, of course, these two bits were filled with zeros from the left-hand side. So that's shift right with two numbers. Now, you can also think of this another way. You can think of it as division by powers of 2. So if the number over here that we started with was uh, 15, the number that we have now is uh, 3 because we divided it by 4. It doesn't come out evenly because it's integer division, but 4 times 3 is 12 and there's a remainder of 3 which, which gets lost. In fact, if you want to think of it that way, the two bits that disappear over here are equal to uh, 3 and that's exactly the size of the remainder. So that's uh, the shift right with two bits. Now, 
Again, uh, as in the case with shift left, sometimes we want to move the upper four bits in a number to the lower half, perhaps to exchange the two hexadecimal digits. So here we have four bits in the upper part of the number. They are now shifted into the lower four bits of the result. And of course, all of the bits that I've circled here uh, disappear. Now let's talk about a variant of the shift right called shift arithmetic right. And this is used in cases where the number is uh, determined to be a signed integer. And the goal here is to preserve the sign. So let's start with negative 128, which you probably know from the reading is equal to this number right here. And we want to shift this to the right by one bit because we're using shift arithmetic right. And what happens is the shift will take into account whatever the highest bit was here and we'll use that to fill the highest bit position of the result. So the bit that was there gets shifted to the right, but at the same time, that same bit value is replicated and inserted into the high bit of the number. Now the reason for doing this is to preserve the number sign, because if the high bit was one, that means the number was negative, and we have to be sure that it preserves its sign when we shift to the right. So I've written down the decimal values here, negative 128, and we shifted it right one bit position, now it's equal to negative 64. But I think you can see that if we had done this a different way, if we had filled this high bit position with a zero instead of a one, then the value would not be negative 64, but instead it would be 64. So we'd have the wrong result. Let's take a look at another example, because negative 128 often is kind of a special case, so we have to be careful that we can do it for other numbers. Here's the value negative 16. And how did we get that? Well, you can start out with 16, you can reverse all the bits and add one, and that's how we ended up with that number. And we want to shift it right one position, and we know the answer is gonna be negative eight if we do this with decimal values. And this is what it would look like in binary. So you can see that each of the existing bits was shifted to the right, like that, and then the same highest bit was replicated and used to insert into the highest bit position of the result. Meanwhile, of course, the lowest bit here goes off into the carry flag and disappears. Uh, shifting right arithmetically is good if you're doing division by a signed power of two. I hope you've enjoyed this recording. In the next one, we'll tackle the rotate instructions.